Hello everyone, welcome back to Cluster B Milkshake. I am your host along with support puppet, Mr. Chicken. Yes! I'm a diagnosed narcissist with the antisocial personality disorder and a funk of throat. I mean, ugh, I'm like trying to clear my throat. I did, like a frog jumped in there and it's like taking over and everything. Uh, uh, Today we're gonna to talk about borderline personality disorder in men and the signs, what to look for in either the person that you are with so you can uh, armchair diagnose them properly. All right, so the same, my narcissist, my nar Now, borderline personality disorder can also be comorbid with other personality traits um, issues, uh, neurodivergent, shit, everything, okay? I said shit. I said shit before the one minute. I think that's okay. I think I can't say it in the first 30 seconds. Okay, I think we're okay. Okay. <clears throat> now I have narcissistic personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. So I know, you know, the differences in both disorders, how one protects the other, and how I have more difficulty with some traits over others. Some I can deal with, some um, I don't even know that are going on sometimes. So it's, an, you know, it's fun. It's fun and exhausting to be me. Be jealous, okay or envy anyway so we're going to talk about um borderline men and one really great book that of course um i do not have the author's name at the moment but i will link it or put it in the description or whatever the hell we do um it's called hard to love this is a really great book it has to deal with borderline men specifically and it talks about all the struggles that they deal with inside it's not just a um you know i hate you don't leave me or i love you i hate you fucking book whatever the fuck that book is and um that's about people dealing with the borderline in their life it's not about you know the borderline and the struggles of the borderline but this book hard to love is it probably, you know, I mean, every every anything that talks about um, a personality disorder is going to talk shit about, you know, I get it. You know, I see that, you know, finding out about my own personality star is um, showing me, yeah, you hurt your people. And it's like, I mean, you know, I didn't care. Um, but I, because of my lack of empathy, I don't feel nothing. I don't feel your pain and everything. Just get out of my way. I'm going to part the sea like motherfucking Moses. Get out of my way. Okay. So, first, some signs. Okay. So, substance abuse and addictions. I have talked to many borderline men and many. Now, this is generalizing. Okay. So, my borderline brother, brethren. Come in here and tell me your experience with yourself, okay? But usually cluster Bs, but in this series, we're talking borderline men, will have substance abuse issues. Um, it kind of can, um, it's their medication. They can medicate themselves. They can fill, fill up the emptiness that they feel inside. They can calm the thoughts and a lot of men who are prone to a lot of anger also when they you know puff puff pass they are more calm my father who was a very um, angry and violent person at times when he smoked the doobie doo doo he was more fun and real, you know, and cool to get along with. That my aunt would just feed him weed all the fucking time just to keep him under control. So I get it. <clears throat> I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. Number two, they usually have other personality disorders like paranoid personality disorders, NPD, schizoid, schizoid, schizoaffective or antisocial personality disorder, 
You see some with um, histrionic personality disorder, you know, the dudes that are always, you know, look at me, look at me, look at me, I'm hot, and walking around with their fucking shirt off all the time, or they're doing um, sexy time uh, uh, all the time, showing off, you know, and just want to, you know, eat or eat or eat or eat or eat or all the time, okay? They use your their body as bait. <clears throat> Number three, explosive temperament and violent outbursts. And when you're around um, somebody who is emotionally dysregulated, they also jump to conclusions about how what you are saying to them, maybe even making up shit in their own mind. Now, their mind is fucking with them all the time. It's like, you know, the devil is whispering on their shoulder that, shady shit is going down all the time or they don't like you anymore or they're you know they're excited about somebody oh they're looking at somebody oh they like somebody's uh profile picture that means they want to wham a lama ding dong they're sucky suck suck you know uh, you know no 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 but this will cause them to fly off the handle get angry um, so, you know, and then you're walking on eggshells all the time, afraid that they're going to explode. And what you have to know is that there's nothing that you can do that's going to stop what their brain is messing with them and telling them, you know, anger time, anger time. It's not adventure time, anger time. And then, you know, throwing shit, uh, holes in walls, holes in your face, okay? For uh, impulsive and novelty seeking, uh, impulsivity is, you know, across the board borderline, for all borderlines and antisocials. Also people with ADHD, they will be very impulsive, um, not even think, and do things right away and they don't even give a shit it's like i'll, I'll take responsibility for whatever later <laughs> not even thinking about the thing that not even thinking about it not even thinking about what i'm going to be responsible for later i'm just going to do the thing because i want the thing right now it's like little kid energy you know i want the thing i want the thing i want to do the thing okay then we have less likely to seek treatment if they do they drop out if they do seek treatment, it's usually for um, substance abuse uh, disorders. You know, I always say like narcissistic people want to go in for anxiety or depression. That's usually why they go in there. Or they might hit rock bottom in doing drugs and everything and they don't want to lose everything or they have lost everything. Um, some go into anger management. Usually it's because it's court appointed because they got in trouble and their woman was like, restraining order, get the fuck out of my house and you don't get to touch me again. And then they have to do this type of treatment. Um, number six, they will idealize you. They have tense emotions, sexual emotions. These are the, you know, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, I cannot breathe without your love. Everything about you is so mate. You know, and these are the, the ones that will trauma dump, overshare. They, it seems like, now borderline brothers, Tell me if you actually do feel this or, you know, you just trauma dump on everybody, but it seems like from the receiver that you put all this trust, this is why you get fucked over by narcissistic people too, because we're taking notes. You're, you're telling us all of the chinks in your armor, everything, you know, uh, all the, all the, uh, uh, loose bolts that, you know, ah, oh, I just have a boo, and then your whole fucking life falls apart and everything. You need to learn to zip it. But if you, you know, if this is your normal and all you do is just walk around with ticker tape going across saying, this is all my shit, arr, 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 arr. you know, this is how to hurt me. Now, if you have an antisocial personality disorder with your borderline stuff, you're gonna be a little bit more manipulative and deceitful. Um, you will go from being, you know, oh, 
mm, too cold and callous and I want to kill you. Yeah, thank you, coffee maker. All right. Um, they believe in the fantasy. Um, they cross all boundaries and you guys enmesh with each other. Each other. Okay, so you're riding the wave with the borderline man as well. You're enjoying all of this stuff. You forget this when you break up with them. You're like, they, they a liar, they a liar. No, they're not a liar. They were feeling that and thinking that you're um, their everything, okay? Take some responsibility. Number seven, fear of abandonment. And now they fear enmeshment. The enmeshment they created, okay? So you want them to keep up the enmesh. You... <clears throat> You want them to keep up the um, romance. You want them to be your romance novel, your rom-com. That's not real for anyone. Re you know, the regular life comes in, the dirty underwear, the bills, the um, bitching and complaining about the job, the I get sick, I want my mommy. You know, the, that is reality. Other uh, people in their lives, friends, drama, everything. Conflict with you. Everything isn't going to be, oh, whatever you want. This isn't coming to America and you're marrying the bride that's like, I like whatever you like. Oh, that's kind of borderline-ish. <laughs> in the beginning, but then they don't stay like that, right? They have a uh, fear of abandonment. Uh, his insecurities crop up and starts to need a lot of reassurance. Why do you love me? Why do you love me? So when you hear somebody say, why do you love me? Me, being a narcissist, I, I'm not asking you why. You, I know why. Because I'm the baddest motherfucker on the land. Now, they're asking, why do you love me? So this is their insecurity coming out. And they want you to give them a motherfucking list of why. One thing, do not make the mistake of saying, um, you know, narcissists do this. I love you because how you love me. No, you want to pinpoint all their great traits about themselves, about their own character, about their own dreams, about their own sweetness, about, you know, all the, the, the cute things in them, the little quirky things in them. You love how they smile. You love like that. Stay away from, um, I love the way you love me. I like that you cook for me. I like that you are my slave. I love that you um, can't live without me because that's you being narcissistic. Okay, okay, all right. And then they're not gonna be fucking happy. And let me tell you that. They're gonna be like, you just love what I do for you. And it's like, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Doesn't like when you're far away from him. Uh, work, family, friends. This is where you're gonna get the dude wanting to isolate you. It calms their anxiety. They know where you are, but nothing is enough. You can get rid of all of your friends. You can quit your job and you fucking are just sitting in his fucking face the whole time. He, you're not gonna you're gonna be losing yourself you're gonna become a shell of a person and then he's gonna find a new shiny toy so do not lose yourself understand your own boundaries okay where's this piece of motherfuck hair Ugh. know your boundaries and as soon as boundaries are being crossed you need to get out okay do not be like you know even I cross people's boundaries and then I'll act like I respect them and then I'm gonna try later down the line. But if you see somebody repeatedly doing it in rapid fire, get out, get the fuck out. Okay. Then you have fears of commitment crop up. They don't want you to leave them, but they need lots of space. It's almost like the um, anxious avoidant attachment style, you know. <clears throat> I need you. I want you. I can't. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh. Right? Push, pull, push, pull. I need you. Leave me alone. I, no, huh, huh. So they're like the cat where, you know, um, you know, give me, touch me, love me, cuddle, but don't touch me. Right? Okay. He might disappear and break up with you. Um, the love is fading away. Now, remember, the love wasn't authentic anyways. They feel like it was because you're, you know, oh, my God. Uh, they have no sense of self. They are liking what you like. They are talking about, you know, the things that you like. They want to be your mirror, you know, because if you love yourself, if you love yourself through another person, you know, you're like, hey, it's like, <clears throat> I would um, date a person and they would be like, um, they wouldn't like horror, okay? And that's one of my things, I like horror. They wouldn't like horror, but then they're, you know, oh, I should get some horror t-shirts and I should, oh, we should watch horror. It's like, you don't even like this shit. You know, you're trying to be. <clears throat> or they'll try to dress like me. Or, you know, I like what you like. Ugh. Knock it off. All right, all right. Um, he makes his dysregulated feelings your fault. So if he's having the mood swing and everything, it's because of you. And then this is where you're going to try to be like, Okay, well, I don't want to upset you, and I don't want to what a you you have no control over motherfucks mood swings. You do not. You cannot make him happy when he's sad. You cannot calm him down when he's angry. Nothing. You you're gonna try. He's gonna make you think that you have control. You don't. You don't. But see, he doesn't know this. He's going to blame you for his life going to shit. Uh, if he finds someone else to make him feel excited about his life again, there's not going to be any more Hoovers for you. So when you're doing the makeup breakup with this person, if they find somebody more exciting because, you know, they're tired, all it is is just bitching, moaning, complaining, you become needy on them, and they're done being needy on you. And they're going to find somebody else. When I was with uh, my borderline dude, I saw that he was liking new music and saying different um, ways of speech. He was using new lingo. And I'm like, who the fuck are you dating or, or, or cheating on me with? Right? It's like I got rid of him quickly after that. I was like, no, you don't get it now. No, 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 no. This is before I understood about main supply, secondary supply, um, side pieces and disposable people. You know, I was just living the life. I didn't understand what, you know, we do, right? Anyways, number nine, splitting. After the split, he will make excuses why this occurred and you will forgive him because he's fragile and sincere. He may even cry about it. The honeymoon stage starts over again. He is now hypersensitive to triggers, jealousy, accusations, a flying. Um, that, that aren't real. So, you know, the accusations of, um, you know, where are you going, who are you looking at, are you cheating on me, all this fucking bullshit. Why'd you take, why'd you take an extra two seconds to get out of the bathroom? Who the fuck are you talking to? Now remember, shady shit people are going to project and think that you're doing shady shit or people who have been in um, toxic relationships in the past are going to be hypersensitive to triggers of shady behavior. But we're talking about borderline men here, okay? All right. Until the split ends, you will be left confused. This is the, um, you know, they're feeling the I love you, I hate you thing. I love you you're all white, I hate you, you're all black. They do not remember anything good about you. Number 10, paranoia and dissociation. Questioning your motives, accusatory, suspicious, numbing out with drugs and alcohol. He'll think that you're cheating. 
Yes, we talked about that. Um, and he will cheat on you and feel justified because he thinks that you're cheating. He's like, an eye for an eye, motherfucker. And you're like, an eye for a nothing, you dumb dick. I wasn't doing nothing. And what's funny is I've talked to other people too, and they're just like, <clears throat> their borderline partner is doing all this cheating and stuff, and you just get desensitized by it. And you're kind of sitting back saying, okay, my person's being crazy right now. They're gonna go be a whore and everything, and they're gonna come back and cry. And you just kind of become desensitized by it. And you're not strong enough to get these fucking people out of your life because you have parentified them now. Now you're just like, okay, Billy's off doing his stupid fucking shit, and then he's gonna come back and cry and beg for forgiveness. Or, um, you know, I'm gonna unalive myself. All right, number 11. After impulsive acts, they beg you back, threaten self-harm, <clears throat> or they will blackmail you. So threats and blackmail, uh, you know, this is, they're gonna get their smear on everything. They believe their smears, people. They believe them, okay? They're so fucking upset. I've had, you know, people go on just huge month long smear campaigns, videos, everything, you know, posts. They're the victim, they're the victim. And it's just like, they believe it. They believe this. <clears throat> 12, they feel depleted. He wears, no, you feel depleted. I, I'm sure he does too. I mean, you know, it's very difficult having all this shit go on in his head, but he wears you down. You make up again, but things get worse. Worse. <laughs> worse. Um, uh, you know, you're going through the cycle, more verbal attacks and probably physical attacks may be taking, pl may be taking place. Not every borderline man is going to be physical, but if they are violent, this is when they're going to get their violent on. This is when, um, you know, an aliving can occur. Please, please get an escape route, please. 13, you walk on eggshells but can't do anything right. You break up again, you know. The, the breakups are getting closer together now. The makeups and breakups are getting closer. Not, not even the makeups are getting closer. The breakups are closer together. Making up is further apart. So you're gonna have longer times apart. First it was a few hours, then a few days. Then it goes to weeks, months. Okay, and then you get back together and then it's shorter time together because everybody is now hypersensitive to triggers. All right, all right. Where am I? He blames you for the downfall of the relationship and his life, is, and his life being a mess. He will feel justified in any punishments, smears, using others to hurt you, flying monkeys, and rebounds. He will throw other women in your face. He'll even bring them around, your friends, your whatever. Oh, run into you. Oh, now posting. Oh, I found my soulmate and blah, blah, blah. Social media is not real. Social media is not real. Do you understand? All this shit is just to hurt you. You think, you think, you know, people ask me, are they doing this just, you know, to hurt me, to, is this for me? Yes, yes. Because if you're in a new relationship and you're happy, you don't need to shout it from, you know, the, the rooftops, a rebound, okay? You haven't grieved the last relationship. You are not healthy in any way. You haven't found your perfect partner that you've been with for several months that you can now tell the world, I found the one. These people who do rebounds 
and they are posting you fast and furious after knowing you for a week. Oh my God, I'm so in love with this person. Now they can idealize somebody fast and furious right away, believe these things. And, but if you see the pattern of them posting, always posting new, new chicks, new chicks, new chicks, new chicks, it's not real. They're going to suffer the same fate as you. So stop doing the, I'm grade A supply, I'm fucking special. Oh, if they hoover me back, that means I'm wonderful. They're just on autopilot. Like, I got to get back to, you know, this person. They feel, they fill a certain need. You know, they nurture me in a specific way. They take my shit. They let me beat them up. Whatever. They let me do hobosexual shit. They're going to let me move back in. I cannot be burp burp. But then they'll cheat on you um, again and again and again and again if that's what they do. Okay? <clears throat> you become codependent and responsible for re regulating their moods. No one can be his peace. He can't be his own peace. So when you see people out there saying, I just want peace, I just, it, be, you have to be your own peace. Okay, somebody else cannot regulate your emotions for you. This is something that cluster bees are always driving for in other people. And this is why we're so controlling over other people. You know, instead of us controlling ourselves, we're controlling others. All right. You turn into his parent and caregiver. The relationship is one sided. Now, What's confusing is that he can fake adults. And this is him pinpointing out your flaws, pinpointing out things that you need to do, behave and control you, things that you are lacking in the relationship, things that, you know, he's going to nitpick the shit out of you. And you're going to start to think that, oh, Oh, well, maybe if I do these things, I'll get the love and light that I got in the beginning. No, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. You have to be so solid in yourself to know, like, is there things that I need to work on? But if he loved you in the beginning of the relationship for who you are, and now he's devaluing you. Yes, borderlines devalue. If he was devaluing you, that means he was overlooking it. Or he knew he didn't like this about you and he's going to make you change over time. This can happen too, okay? So um, if he starts complaining about your weight, whether you're too skinny or too thick, fuck you, bro. This is what you've got in the beginning of the... Re I am not your project. Get away from me. You want me to throw all the icks in your fucking face? Here we go, bro. So, uh-uh. If somebody starts picking you apart about things that they loved about you in the beginning or didn't say, you know, that's their problem. I like my ex-husband. He was a football fan. I did not know what I was getting myself into. But I would still go to football parties with him because I wanted to hang out with him on the weekend. You know, so... You, when I did find out what the fuck I was getting, that this was going to be my whole fucking life, I'm just like, dude, football is for you, not for me. I don't want to fucking deal with it, but I'll do things, you know, for you every once in a while. But there was a compromise, okay? I don't even know where the fuck I'm going with this. Okay, so um, I hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Hard to love book. I'm gonna put that shit in the fucking description. All right, all right. Namaste.